us assume a simple example like uh, coming to imagine a bakery input what is the input in the bakery like flour sugar eggs some other materials labors even machines and some like electrical electricity energy these all are the inputs and coming to outputs output is the bread or some cakes that which we all are love if the bakery uses these inputs to produce 100 breads a day within a day and tomorrow with the same inputs they can manage to produce 120 breads their productivity has been increased but uh, their inputs is not increased so this is nothing but conversion efficiency matters this is how conversion efficiency matters within the manufacturer companies so because it is very higher productivity means more in produced with the same or fewer resources automatically it will be leading to lower cost and potentially higher profits a company le, take a best practice that uh, a company that can produce more shoes with the same number of workers and materials is it more productivity or not definitely it would be a more productive and making it more competitive in the market understanding these relationship which which relationship conversion efficiency matters understanding these conversion efficiency and inputs and outputs will definitely makes a business more focused on improving their processes and to which which would be maximizes more outputs without unnecessarily increasing the inputs this is nothing but inputs and outputs concept coming to next one which is system concepts in operations management generally what is a system a system is a group of related parts or components that work together to achieve a specific goal in operations management these systems will ensure that the process of turning inputs into outputs is efficient and effectively you can take an example of production systems generally how these production systems are works generally the production systems will take say, inputs such as like material labor energy etc and converts them into outputs like finished products or services a real life example is car manufacturing plant a plant is a system where parts labor machines and uh, some technologies inputs all these are inputs are used to produce a vehicles final output which is car so more importance of feedback mechanisms why is this feedback mechanisms are important what is this feedback generally the feedback is a system it is informed about how well the system is performing why does it matters means it helps identify what is working well and what needs to be improved and it's a continuous improvement by analyzing the feedback business make sure that they will make changes to their processes to more efficient and reduce the wastage and increase some more quality in the product take a production line feedback for example if a bakery notices through feedback like customer reviews or quality checks that their bread is not raising well they can adjust their oven temperature or ingredient mix this continuous loop of producing happens because of receiving the feedback right and improving some ensures the bakery's output and automatically it meets to the customer expectations so why is understanding these systems is systems within the operations management means it is more efficiency and it is more adaptability and also makes a good quality with this continuous feedback 
by viewing the operations as a systems in inputs it will processes the and gives outputs and will take feedbacks then later managers can effectively oversee and improve their operations for the better performance and better the for the better customer satisfaction so hope you clear with the system concepts in the operations management next one is performance versus cost objectives generally these are goals that which will focus on how well a company operates and delivers a product generally it will be maximizes the productivity and effectiveness of the operations efficiency coming to efficiency what is efficiency these are the performance objectives of the what is efficiency making sure that resources are used in the best way to minimize the wastes and maximize the output is nothing but the efficiency coming to the quality we all are know about quality that uh, producing the better product and uh, that which will meet or exceeds the customer expectations is nothing but the best quality and effectiveness effectiveness is that the company's operations align with its overall goals and deliver desirable results or not and lead times which will reduce is the time taken to produce a product or the deliver a service from start to finish capacity utilization using the full potential of resources like machines staff etc some other things without overloading or under using them using them efficiently coming to flexibility being able to adapt to changes and such as customer demands market trends or some with new technologies all these are objectives of the performance objectives and coming to the cost objectives and uh, you can take a better uh, better example like a car manufacturers they will be always aims to produce a vehicles very quickly without any defects like a quality or lead times using some resources more efficiently and being able to switch production from sedans to suvs as needed it is nothing but flexibility and it's the best example for performance object coming to cost objectives cost objectives means explicit costs means visible costs like uh, labor material downtime all these are the visible cost labor means wa wages that paid to the employees materials the cost of raw materials needed for the production downtime means the costs that incurred when the machines or processor are not operating is nothing but downtime coming to implicit costs it in the implicit costs opportunity cost the potential profit lost when choosing one option over another for example if a factory chooses to make one product it might lose out on the profit from producing a different product right this is nothing but opportunity cost and maintenance cost generally these might not be a obvious upfront but can add add up the more time and affecting the budget and coming to training cost these are the expenses that which are more related to improving the staff skills and may be visible immediately but uh, it will affect the long term finances you can take a better example of bakery it will calculate its uh, visible cost like for floor ex labor but also considers a hidden cost like the potential revenue lost if it is stops making cakes definitely it starts selling cookies is nothing but opportunity cost so balancing these performance objective and cost objective will ensures that the company can run efficiently and also it will keeps customers more satisfied and maintain the healthy profit margins
Hope you clear with this. Performance and versus cost objectives. Okay. Next one is types of production systems. How many production systems are there? Generally, first one is mass production. What is this mass production means? A system where large quantities of standardized products are made is nothing but mass production. It is very high in volume. And it's a continuous process with little variation. That later, often uses some assembly lines and automated systems. For example, you can take it as a automobiles. Like a car manufacturers like Ford produces the thousands of same models. And coming to electronics, companies like Samsung, it will produce a large volume of identical smartphones. And uh, pros and cons of these mass production is it's a very low cost per unit and very high efficiency. But the disadvantage is like uh, little flexibility and high initial setup cost. Next one is batch production. So what is this batch production means? A system where products are made in batches. Each batch can vary slightly or significantly from others. It will produce a limited number of products before switching to another batch. Very good for producing the seasonal or limited uh, edition items. For example, bakeries. The bakery might make one batch of cupcakes followed by a batch of different types of cookies, right? And uh, coming to uh, clothing manufacturers, factories, uh, these factories will produce the different types of clothing lines in batches. For example, summer collection, winter collection. And the third one is third type of production system is job shop production. Generally, the system is designed for custom. Means a small scale production where each product is made to specific customer specifications. This is very low volume and high customization. For example, uh, customer furniture markets. Here, they will crafting the furniture pieces tailored to the different, uh, according to the different types of customer needs. And like uh, some specialized machine parts, a company that makes unique machine components for specific clients. So customized product will come from the job shop production. And the last system is Unit manufacturing means projects. Here the system used for large and one of the projects that uh, often take a long time to complete. So coming to the key features of this unit manufacturing. Produces the unique products. Often large in scale. The better example for this unit manufacturing is constructing a ship from the start to finish, like ship buildings, construction projects, like building the bridges, skyscrapers, or some customer homes. All these are unit manufacturers okay So, we are going to mass production and 
जनरल इधक सिस्टम एक्त मन लज् क्वांटी प्रोड्यूसो लज् क्वांटी प्रोडक्ट प्रोड्यूसो दट नथिंग बट मोडक्ष अं कमिंग टू दि बैच प्रोडक्ष इकड़ प्रोडक्ट अने बैच बैच तैयार होता है लाइक मन इंदा तस्कनाम कदा एग्जापल बेकरी बेकरी कपके रेडी चस्ताड़ ऐस वेल ऐस दा तो कुकी रेडी चस्ता इट इज नथिंग बट बैच प्रोडक्ष जॉब षाप प्रोडक्ष अंत इध कस्टम प्रोडक्ष अन्ट अंत कस्टमर्स मन कल आ कस्टमर्स की वाल तुट् वाले सर्कम स्टेस इनपुट मन कस्टम प्रोडक्ट अने जॉब षाप प्रोडक्ष रेडी चस्ता नैक्स्ट फोर्थ वन इज यूनि मैनुफाक्चरिंग प्रोडक्ट इकड़ द बेस्ट एग्जापल कंस्ट्रक्ष प्राजेक्ट इक बिल बिल ब्रिडेस अंड स्कई स्क्रेपर्स अंड सस्टम होम इवन यूनि मैनुफाक्चरिंग अंत प्राजेक्ट विच इज रिटेड टू दि बिल लाइक बिल प्रोडक्ट उ वीटन यूनि मैनुफाक्चरिंग अटा ओके डे अड़को ओके थैंक यू श्री योदा रोल आफ मेटीरिय मेनेज सो रोल आफ मेटीरिय मेनेज जनरली इट इज ए प्रासे ओवर सिंग दि फ्लो आफ मेटीरिय फ्रम दि मूवेंट दे आर् प्रोक्यूर् अंटल दे आर् डेलीवर्ड ऐस पार्ट आफ दि फैनल प्रोडक्ट इट एनश्यूर्स दट दि रईट मेटीरिय अवेलबल इन दि रईट प्लेस एट रईट टाइम and right quality quantity or not so sriyoda hope you are clear with the english and nen meek middle middle lo telugu examples kuda isthanu okay na okay ma'am okay thank you a uh, role of materials management so ikkada कमिंग टू आबजेक्ट आफ मेटीरिय मेनेज सारी सो कास्ट रिडक्शन वाट कास्ट रिडक्शन कास्ट रिडक्शन इज टू मिनीम दि कास्ट आफ पर्चे स्टोरी अंड हाँ मेटीरिय बै डिफैंडिंग दि रिबल सप्ले अंड नगोशिटिंग गुड डील अंड रिड्यूसिंग दि वेस्ट इन दि process cost reduction ante mana extra emaithe expenses and costs untayo avanni reduce chestuntam like mana minimize chestuntam anamata purchasing cost ni alage storage cost and handling material cost ni fees ni veetni ee cost reduction lo minimize chestuntam idi oka one of the objective for materials management next one is inventory control inventory control is nothing but to maintain optimal inventory levels having enough materials to meet production needs but not so much that excess stock increases the costs so ensuring steady supply so what is what does it mean generally it will prevent production delays by ensuring that materials are consistently available or not by building strong relationship with the uh, like the suppliers and having break up plans for unexpected disruptions and significance of the material management so take a good example of automobile manufacturing so what does it uh, uh, coming to procurement firstly in these automobile manufacturing procurement will be held like the company sources will steal or like uh, some other electronics and other components from different suppliers this is nothing but procurement as we discussed before 
and coming to inventory control. They use a system to track some parts or to ensure they have some just enough to meet their different types of production schedules without overstocking them. Next one is steady supply. The company might have contracts with the different types of multiple suppliers. But they will make sure to ensure that they don't run out of critical components. If one supplier has an issue, then the steady supply entirely will be damaged. So without these occurring, we can use the procurement later, inventory control, study supply. We will use these type of roles in the materials management. So why is this important? It will reduce the costs by optimizing the some procurement of storage, lending to better profit markets and improve efficiency and maintain the product quality, which only high quality, well-managed and materials. It will contribute to a high quality end products. So generally it will focus on the cost reduction, inventory control and ensuring a steady supply. Material management plays a very important role in making the production processes efficient and more cost effective. So next one is a very simple concept, which is life cycle concepts. So there are completely four stages are there in this life cycle concept, which is growth, maturity, saturation and decline stages. So growth in growth stages, sales will start increasingly as more people buy the product. sales increase Customer products buy Generally, it will be focuses on make more of the products and advertise to attract the more customers. So coming to maturity, as we all are know. Sales will reach their highest point and the product becomes a well-known. It will focus on keep costs down and five ways to, it will find the different types of ways to stand out from different types of competitors. Coming to the saturation point, here sales will slow down because there are too many similar products on the market. It will focus on keep the product interesting and Find different types of new customers or markets. And finally, decline stays. Here, sales will drop as a new products or technology will replace it. And also, it will decide it's worth updating or discontinuing the product. All these are the product life cycle concepts. So, uh, uh, strategies could I use to decline and on a uh, life cycle decisions so like uh, some strategies product selection means which is choosing what products to make more improve and technology investing in new tools or new methods to make the product better or more cheaper and location deciding the better location where to produce or sell the products for the best results is some of the decisions, strategic decisions during the life, life cycle period, okay? So, okay, but best example in the case, smartphones. Smartphone low, your first stage this country, growth stage low, it will be a more popular. So, the company makes more and advertise a lot. Advertisements are in the company. And coming to the maturity. Second stage. People more already more most people will already know the about it. So the company focuses on the reducing production cost. Next, coming to the saturation. Many other brands release similar products or similar smartphones. So the company automatically tries to add a new features or updates. And coming to last two stage, which will be decline stage. Some fewer people will buy it as a newer models come out. So the company decides whether to improve it or stop selling it. And bottom line, 
knowing the stages of the products product life will helps the business to make a more smart decisions and to make a plan for cost over a time so they can stay profitable and more competitive here next topic is some of the scientific methods that which is used in the operations management generally these scientific methods are used to structure the approaches used to solve a different types of problems or making a different types of decisions based on the data analysis and like some logic different types of law by using different types of logics main tools is operations tools so what is operations research here a field that uses mathematical models and analytical techniques to solve the complex problems such as like optimizing the supply chains or scheduling the production for example using the algorithms to find out the best delivery routes for a logistic company to save fuel or some time and coming to next one industrial engineering so what does industrial engineering means here it will be focuses on designing and improving the production processes to make them more efficient example rearranging a factory layout or to reduce the time it takes for materials to improve from one machine to the another one last one is behavioral sciences here the study of people how behave in within the work environment it will helps improving team productivity and job satisfaction for example studying employee behavior to create better work schedules that will reduce the fatigue and increases output more output more ben by benefits of using these strategic methods are rational decision making means decisions are based on the data and proven techniques not guess works this leads to smarter more consistent choices for example using the data to decide the more cost effective way to source raw materials this is nothing but rational decision making and efficient problem solving here scientific methods will be help to identify the different types of problems and analyze them systematically and finding solutions to that improve efficiency and reduce the different types of cost for example using the simulation to test the different types of production scenarios like choosing the best one before making a real changes Uh, the best example for these scientific methods using in operations management is like a company facing a production delays it can be use operations research to create a scheduling models that which would be minimizes the downtime industrial engineering like it can be designing the workflow for better speed and behavioral sciences can be address worker motivation to increase the more productivity okay so coming to the historical development historical development of this operations management adam smith division of labor in the 18th century adam smith introduced the idea of breaking down the work into the smaller tasks which each worker can specializing in a each different parts why is it more important means it will made work faster and more efficient before working got really good at their specific tasks a simple example for this is in a factory one person would only put wheels on a toy toy car instead of the making the old car this is the best example of adam smith's division of labor so work ane danni different different parts kinda uh, smaller tasks kinda div uh, divide chesi different different people ki ivatam valla then productivity anedi perugutundi automatically 
it leads to faster work and time saving adam theory ani cheptundante maniki ee division of labor concept ide cheptundi and coming to fw taylor scientific management principles here in the early 1900 frederick taylor who is introduced a method of study work and find a best ways to do the different types of tasks it is very important because these help a set of clear steps and standards for work to increase the productivity and reward good performance for example timing how long it takes to complete a task and finding ways to do faster like using the better tools different types of tools is explained by the fw taylor scientific method in the 1900s 1900s century early 1900s and coming to modern techniques here jtis which means just in time producing only a what's needed when it's needed it will reduce the wastes and popularized uh, popularized by some uh, toyota like these save storage costs and coming to total quantity management which is uh, tqms making sure that everything in the company is focused on improving quality or not and iso 9000 standards guidelines that helps companies meet quality standards ensuring products are reliable when meet their customers or not customer needs or not and why does these matters means for better efficiency and for higher quality and adapting to different types of changes generally the operations management has grown from these simple ideas like dividing tasks like adam smith theory to using a advanced technology today here each step made work smoother and products better and companies more competitive coming to the product selection and process selection so what is this product selection and process selection means the process of deciding which products a company should make and sell why it is important means choosing the right product in the critical because it is affects the company's market position and profitability and also long term successes here which factors we need to consider means like uh, customer demand is there enough demand for the product or not the first question we need to weigh for ourselves next one is to productability means can the product generate enough profit or not manam teesukune product anedi manaki manam expect chesina profit ni istunda leda ani next one is resources and capabilities does the company have the skills and resources to make the product or not product cheyadaniki kavalsina manpower and resources company ki unnaya leda ani next one is competition are there are too many similar products in the market or not these questions we need to consider and these factors also we need to consider in product selection and process selection here the best example is a company might choose to start producing the different types of electrical bicycles if it is sees that more people want eco friendly transportation and coming to the process selection the process selection is deciding how to produce the chosen product here choosing the right process will affects the efficiency cost and quality flexibility all over in the production so types of processes are job shop batch production mass production and continuous production as we discussed before okay factors to be considered here is like a product type is it a standard product or customized product and product volume like how many units need to be made cost and efficiency which processes is more cost effective and flexibility how easily can the process adopt the changes or not so here 
with this we will get to know the importance and introduction of product selection and process selection. Next one is screening and economic analysis. So what is screening? Generally, the screening is the first step in deciding if a new project or product idea is good for the company or not. In the screening, two types of screenings are there, which is qualitative screening and quantitative screening. Generally, the qualitative screening will look at non-numerical factors to see if the project fits the company's goals or not. Example, a company known for eco-friendly products. It will check if the new product idea is environmentally friendly, friendly or not, which is qualitative screening. And coming to quantitative screening, it will involve the looking at numbers to see if the projects can be profitable or not. For example, estimating the how much money the project will make and what it will be cost. Coming to economic analysis. Generally, the economic analysis is a detailed financial check to make sure the project will make money over the time or not. Here, we need to calculate revenues and look at the costs that we are spend and see if it will be given a good return on investment means ROI or not and using some net present values NPVs to check future earnings in today's money value. So why it is very important means for long term success and lower down the risks. The economical analysis is very much important. Simple example, a company wants to launch a new gadget. Here qualitative screening means checking if the gadget fits the brand image or not. For example, it is a innovative or not. Next qualitative screening means estimating if the gadget will make more money than its cost to produce or not. Later economic analysis means looking at the project is Long, the product, the gadget is long term numbers to be sure it's a good financial move or not. So, like this, the screening helps decide if a project idea is good or good for the company or not. And economic analysis can check if it, it will be make more money in long run or not. These steps will automatically make sure that the company invests in projects that would be worthful or not like that okay and later product development and design so how could be how could we will be develop the product and making design so what is first of all what is this product development and design the product development is the process of creating a or pro improving improving products to meet customer needs and stay competitive or not and coming to product design, the product design is all about to deciding what the product will look like and how it will be functions. So, coming to product design factors, there are some key factors are there in product design, like function. What the product is supposed to do? Example, a smartphone's function includes making calls, texting messages, and sending text, and uh, some accessing apps. The cost. Cost is the another factor, which is how much it costs to make and how that affects the price. Example, choosing a affordable materials to keep the product's price competitive. Quality. How well the product is made and how long it lasts. A high quality watch that keeps working several years and years and years. And checking the reliability, the product's ability to function correctly over time or not. Without breakdowns or not. A car that does not need any frequent repairs, right? And appearance of the product. How the product looks and whether it's attractive to the customers or not and safety of the product. Ensuring the product is 
safe to use and does not pose risks to users. For example, you can take it as a best example of a child's toy, which is designed without uh, small parts that could be swallowed. So these factors are very important. So the product development and re design will help to create or improve more products by focusing on key factors like function cost, quality, reliability, appearance, and safety of the products. Automatically, this ensures the product meets customer needs and stays competitive, and it will be safe and effective to use or not, like that. So, trade-offs in process market, process selection. What is these trade-offs? So, in choosing how to produce a product, business will need to make a trade-offs. This means balancing the different factors to choose the best production process. The goal, the main goal here is to find out the right balance between capacity, flexibility and some lead time and cost. Is nothing but trade-offs. Here, capacity is the one, one of the factors. Means the amount of product and process can produce. Trade-offs means higher capacity can produce more products, but maybe more expensive and less flexible. In coming to flexibility, how easily the process can be adapted to different types of products or changes in the demand. A highly flexible, flexible process can handle changes easily, but may produce at the higher cost or slower speed. Lead time. The time it takes from starting production to delivering the product is nothing but lead time. Here, shorter lead times can meet to customer demand very quickly, but may need more resources or higher costs. Coming to cost, it is very expensive of setting up and running the production processes. So, example of these trade-offs is the best example is clothing manufacturers if the company chooses a high capacity produces to sorry if the company chooses a high capacity of process to produce the la, large amount of clothing at at a time so they will save on production cost but may not be flexibly fashion trend change, changes right if they choose a more flexible process that can which should be adapted to new different styles very quickly. The production might cost more and take longer affecting lead time and to get more profit. Here, generally, the trade-offs in process selection involves the balancing capacity and flexibility and lead time and cost to choose the best production method. Companies must decide whether they need to produce items in advances, means produce to stock, PTS, or to make them after an order is placed, produce to order, depending on their business needs and customer expectations. So here, how many forms of transformation processes are there? First one is project form. It is used for big and one-time jobs. For example, building a house or planning a big event. Each project is very much unique and has a clear start and different types of end. So, used for big product projects and one-time jobs. And coming to intermittent flow. It is used to make a custom products in small amounts. For example, a bakery making custom cakes or making some uh, clothes based as customer requests. It is very flexible because it can change how products are made to meet different types of needs. Next one is continuous flow. What does this continuous flow mean? It is used to make a lot of same product at the same time. So, for example, factories will making 
soda bottles are a power plant producing electricity it runs non stoply and making the same thing over a over and over differently so each type is used to based on what the company needs to produce whether it's a unique product custom orders or high volume products they need to choose all these three types are forms of the transformation process so here key points in process design there are some key points are there that we need to keep in mind while designing the process importance of balancing trade offs means in a process design you need to balance different types of factors like cost speed quality and flexibility for example if you want to produce something quickly it might cost more if you want to save money and production might take more longer process design aims to find the best balances for the company's needs use of computer aided systems using different types of technology to help design and manufacture products here some types are there in computer aided systems which is cads means computer aided designs it will generally it will helps to create detailed product details designs on a computer next cams computer aided manufacturing it will uses in computer software to control the machinery during production and cims computer integrated manufacturing it will combines both cad and cam allowing for a fully automated design to produce the process for example an auto manufacturer will use a cad to design the car parts and cam to guide robots that built these two parts next one is integration of group technologies it is a method that groups similar products or parts together in the production process and generally it will helps to improve the efficiency by organizing production around similar tasks or items so for example a factory producing different types of screws in groups similar sizes and the types together are very streamlined production and it will automatically reduces the machine setup changes generally these key points will help making process designing and more effective ensuring that products are made efficiency and meet some customer expectations or not so facilities location what is how these facilities location will impact impact so generally first of all what is these facilities location just a minute generally the facilities location is the process of choosing the best place for the business production or service facility because it plays a very important it very it plays very important role because the location affects the cost of operations how easily products reach customers and overall business success so here why the facilities location is important because some cost efficiency a well chosen locations can reduce the transportation costs labor and some operational costs it will access to easy markets being close to customers or key markets helps with the quicker delivery and better customer satisfaction availability of resources the location should must provide access to the materials and labors needed for the production and good infrastructure like roads ports and some utilities will support the smooth operations see for example 
ఒక కంపెనీ ఉంది ఆ కంపెనీ మనం సిటీలో పెడితే మనకి ఎంత కన్వీనియంట్ గా ఉంటుంది లేదంటే అదే కంపెనీని తీసుకెళ్లి ఒక ఫారెస్ట్ లో ఎక్కడో పెడితే ఎలా ఉంటుంది ఫారెస్ట్ లో పెట్టడం వల్ల కస్టమర్స్ కి రీచ్ అవ్వదు ఫస్ట్ ఆఫ్ ఆల్ నెక్స్ట్ వచ్చేసి ట్రాన్స్పోర్టేషన్ కాస్ట్ అనేది చాలా ఎక్కువగా ఉంటుంది లేటర్ అసలు ట్రాన్స్పోర్టేషన్ ఉంటుందో లేదో కూడా తెలియదు కస్టమర్స్ కి క్లోజ్ గా ఉండదు నెక్స్ట్ అవైలబిలిటీ రిసోర్సెస్ అనేవి ఉండవు మెటీరియల్స్ అయినా లేబర్ కావాల్సిన ఎక్కడో ఫారెస్ట్ లో ఉన్న ఉన్న చోటుకు వచ్చి మనకి వాళ్ళు వర్క్ చేయరు కదా సో దట్ లొకేషన్ అనేది చాలా ఇంపార్టెంట్ అండ్ గుడ్ ఇన్ఫ్రాస్ట్రక్చర్ ఉండదు సో దట్ విత్ ఇన్ ది సిటీస్ లో సిటీస్ లొకాలిటీస్ లో సో మంచి మంచి ప్లేస్ అనేది చాలా ఇంపార్టెంట్ సో ఫెసిలిటీస్ ఆఫ్ లొకేషన్ విల్ ప్లేస్ ఏ వెరీ ఇంపార్టెంట్ రోల్ ఫర్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ అమెజాన్ డిస్ట్రిబ్యూషన్ సెంటర్స్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ ద అమెజాన్ ఈస్ ద ఈ కామర్స్ జెయింట్ ఇట్ విల్ కేర్ఫుల్లీ చూసెస్ ది లొకేషన్ ఆఫ్ ఇట్స్ డిస్ట్రిబ్యూషన్ సెంటర్స్ లైక్ వేర్ హౌసెస్ టు మేక్ షూర్ దట్ కస్టమర్స్ విల్ గెట్ దేర్ ఆర్డర్స్ వెరీ క్విక్లీ అండ్ టు గోట్ లెస్ డెలివరీ కాస్ట్ అండ్ ఆటోమేటికలీ ఇట్ విల్ రిజల్ట్ బై ప్లేసింగ్ ఏ డిస్ట్రిబ్యూషన్ సెంటర్స్ ఆటో అమెజాన్ కెన్ ఆఫర్ ఫాస్ట్ అండ్ ఆఫ్టర్ సేమ్ డే డెలివరీ కీపింగ్ కస్టమర్స్ మోర్ హ్యాపీ అండ్ మెయింటైనింగ్ ఏ కాంపిటేటివ్ ఎడ్జ్ సో ఫెసిలిటీస్ లొకేషన్ ఇన్వాల్వ్స్ ది ఫైనింగ్ ది బెస్ట్ ప్లేస్ టు సెటప్ ఏ బిజినెస్ ఆపరేషన్స్ టు బ్యాలెన్స్ కాస్ట్ అండ్ టు యాక్సెస్ ది కస్టమర్స్ ఈజీలీ అండ్ గెటింగ్ మోర్ రిసోర్సెస్ అండ్ ఇన్ఫ్రాస్ట్రక్చర్ A great example is the Amazon's use of strategically located distribution centers to provide quick and efficient service to the customers. So what is facility? What is the concept of facility? Generally, the facility is a place where operations takes place, whether for making products or providing services. It can be a building space or complex. that uh, which will support say specific functions or set of activities or not so how many types of facilities are, are there first one is production operation facilities generally it will places where products are made or assembled for example like factories where items like cars and electronics or some clothing are manufactured warehouses it's also a best example that buildings where products are stored before the distribution or production operation facilities next service system facilities generally these means the places that provide service to the people example banks it will facilitates where financial services are offered and also good example hospitals facilities where medical care and treatments are provided police stations recreation centers all these will be comes under concept of a sorry uh, system service uh, service system facilities and next one is ah uh, sorry only two are there next uh, why these are more important because more efficiency and for the more accessibility and more functionality so you can take it as a better example hospital as a facility because a hospital is a facility that is designed to offer a health care services it's organized into various units like emergency rooms operating theaters and some patient rooms different types of units are there within the hospitals to ensure that patients receive the best care possible or not the layout and location of the hospital are very much crucial to make it accessible for patients and efficient for medical staff to provide the services here the facility can be a any location it is used for production or some service purposes such as factories banks hospitals and recreation centers these facilities are essential for carrying out operations that serve people needs or create products or not like that. so when does a location decision arises 
here establishing a new facility means a business needs to decide where to set up a new brand new operations and a company launches its first factory or stores needs to choose the best city or region for it an expansion restricted by current location where the current location is too small or limited to support business growth for example a restaurant that has more customers than it can handle it might look for a second like location nearby to expand next new market territories or policy driven decentralization a business wants to enter a new market so must spread out due to government regulations example a company opening stores in a new countries or cities to reach more customers or to comply with policies that encourages operations in different areas impacted by the economic social or so, uh, political changes because shifts that the economy social conditions or some uh, political climates it will make a necessary to relocate or open new facilities the best example is a manufacturing company may move operations to another region due to some tax benefits or to avoid some political instability because location decisions must come up when a business needs to be open a new facility or expanding beyond its current space or entering new markets or or some adapting some new economic like uh, political changes or some social changes all these decisions are will help a business to stay more competitive and uh, reach out to the new customers and the factors that which is influencing the general territory selections first one is generally the first step is to choose a broad region or territory where the facility might be located the factor factors that are considered is proximity to markets means how close the location is to customers to reduce the delivery time and cost and access to resources availability of raw materials and some skill levels and some infrastructures like uh, roads or ports and economic uh, conditions also a very important factor because the cost of land and taxes and other some economical incentives are that can influence the overall decision next site and community selection so what is community selection means once the general territory is chosen the next step is to select a specific site or community within the territory factors that could be considered in these site selection is community support whether the local community supports the facility or not including some favorable regulations transportation links because transportation is like highways and the airport
okay sorry for the interruption due to power loss please wait i'm going to share ppt okay the next topic is subjective and semi quantitative quantitative techniques so what are these subjective and semi quantitative techniques generally these techniques are used to evaluate the different options when making the decisions about the like uh, facility location and they will combine the qualitative judgment means subjective with the numerical or scaled assessments like semi quantitative quantitative which will helps to decision makers choose the best option so there are some key techniques are there here first one is industry precedence method what is this means a method where past practices and standards within the industry guide the decision means using some historical data and old past practices to make a decision here companies will look at what competitors or similar business have done successfully and using that as a benchmark for example if most logistics companies look at warehouses very near to major highways why because a new company may follow the trend to stay competitive next one is preferential factor method this method is generally involves identifying and ranking factors that are most important to the decision makers because decision makers will list out the factors they are about to for example a cost labor availability and transport links and prioritize them based on their preferences example a tech company may rank some access to skilled labor higher than the transportation links when choosing a new office location right next one is dominant factor method this factor method is used where one single factor is so important then it dominates the decision so how it works generally it will works on the basis of decision is largely based on the outcomes of the dominant factors even if other factors are considered also for example data centers or reliable access to electricity might be the dominant factor so the location with the best power infrastructure is the is to be chosen even if other factors are not as favorable also for net centers the wifi connection is and also electricity is mandatory 
and it's a very important factor to be considered. This is nothing but dominant factor method. Next is factor ranking and weighted ranking systems for qualitative evaluation. Here, a semi-quantitative technique that involves giving a scores to different factors and weighting them, weighing them based on their importance. How it works generally, identifying the factors. List, list the, you list the all the important factors like cost, labor availability, proximity to markets, etc. And assign their weights. Like assign a weight, example, on a scale from 1 to 5. To show how the important each factor is and rate these options like rating each potential option based on how well it meets each factors for example scale from 1 to 10 and calculate the scores finally multiplying the rating by the weight for each factor and add them up for the each option the option with the highest score is often the best choice for the best example is a company choosing between three cities for a new office may rate each city based on the factors like cost, labor availability and transportation links. The cost is weighted around 5 and labor availability is weighted around 4 and transportation links are weighted around 3. So each city gets a score for these factors which are they're multiplied by the weight and tolerated to find the best locations. So why is the subjective and semi-qualitative techniques is important means like uh, for industry precedence and preferential factors and for dominant methods helps us companies to make the informed decisions by considering the both qualitative and numerical factors and factors ranking with and weighted rating systems to add the more structure to the evaluation and ensuring that the three priorities guide the final choices. So next one is locational break-even analysis. Generally, the locational break-even analysis is a method that this method is used by business to compare the different types of costs and some potential revenues of operating different uh, sites. Generally, it will help to decide which location would be the most cost effective for the business, especially when considering the fixed and variable cost. So coming to break even formula. Here break-even formula is, it's more volume in the number of units that need to be sold for the total revenue to the equal total cost. The formula is for break-even volume is fixed cost by selling price per unit minus variable price per unit. So how it works? How can we calculate it? Here Calculating the break-even volume for each location using the formula. It will compare the results to see which location requires fewer units to break even. Which is indicating most cost effective. Okay. Here are some quantitative models are there for facility location. What are they? First one is median model. What is, is this median model is? It is a way to pick the best place for a facility that minimizes the travel distance using the grid pattern like city streets. So it is used for good for locations in cities where you move, on, move up or 
down or left or some right like driving through city blocks example choosing a spot for a warehouse so that delivery trucks travel the shortest total distance to reach out stores in the within the cities this is nothing but median model and coming to gravity model this is the way to find out a best central spot for a facility that keeps transportation cost as low as possible for example finding the best location for a distribution center so that it's close to several towns minimizing the overall shipping cost right it is a gravity model medial model is best for city like areas with a grid layouts to minimize the travel distance and coming to gravity model it's best for finding a central points that keeps cost low between central locations these models these two models generally help for business to pick the best place to find out the build their facilities and to save the time coming to composite models and analysis here the first model is brown and gibson model how it works generally a model that combines both objective means measurable and subjective means like opinion based factors both objective and subjective factors to choose a best location for a facility generally these model will assign weights to different factors based on how important they are and then evaluates each potential location using the both data and expert opinions taking the best example when selecting a site for a new factory and the objective factors are like cost distance uh, and to some suppliers all these are combined with some subjective factors like the local community supports or business climates second one is bijman's dimensional analysis these method is used to compare both tangible and intangible factors in decision making like uh, these analysis helps decision makers see the full picture by considering things like cost tangible cost and employees moral community attitudes which are intangible we can't see them for example a company designing a deciding a between two locations might compare rent prices which is tangible with how welcoming the community is to new business intangible so these two models will help companies to make smarter location decisions by considering a mix of hard data and human judgment and here is the some of the recent trends in facility location which is moving plants away from cities means companies are choosing to build their facilities outside of crowded city areas to avoid higher costs and traffic congestion and some limited space in cities for example factories moving to suburban or rural areas where land is cheaper and there more space for expansion is available and industrial estate development this is the creation of dedicating the industrial areas where multiple businesses set up their facilities and why it's more important means these estates provide the ready infrastructure such as roads utilities and some uh, like support services and making it easier for companies to set up a operate for example industrial parks it will be set up where manufacturers and warehouses and some other facilities are grouped together for more efficiency third one is decentralization and regional development focus generally it will spreading out business locations across different regions instead of concentrating them in one central area it is more beneficial because it helps balance economic growth and reduces the strain on major cities like a support job creations in any every different areas for example you can take it as a companies opening offices or plants in smaller towns to boost the local economics and reduce operational costs 
the last one is environment and pollution control considerations here companies now take environmental impact to account when choosing the facilities locations for example factories choosing the locations where they can use renewable energy sources or having space for eco friendly waste management systems so coming to facilities layout and material handling so what is facilities layout generally the facilities layout is a way that machines and equipment of and machines and equipments and some work areas are arranged in a facility to create a efficient workflow here the goal is to optimize space and to reduce movement and improvement production efficiency and coming to material handling here it involves the movement storage and control of materials within the facility it focuses on ensuring that materials are transported in a way that it is safe or not and cost effective or not and some it is efficient or not here both facilities layout and material handling are very crucial to smooth operations and play a very much important role in productivity and reducing the cost and for safety maintenance in the workplace how many types of layouts are there the first type of layout is product or line layout here a line a layout where machines and equipments are set up in a line to make products that are the same or very similar here it is a very high volume and standardized products for example a car assembly lines where each car moves down a line and different parts are added step by step it's a product or line layout and coming to the process or functional layout it is a layout where similar processes or machines are grouped together for example a bakery with the separate areas for mixing and baking and decorating different kinds of baked goods is called function uh, functional layout or the process layout we can call it as both and what is cellular layout the cellular layout is generally a group machines and work stations into the different cells each handling similar tasks for specific products or different parts for example a manufacturing cell that assembles the specific parts for bicycles with all necessary machines grouped together and coming to fixed position layout it is a product which stays in a one place and workers and equipment come to it is nothing but fixed position layout ela it is a very heavy and large it's a immobile products example building or a ship or a construction sites or workers move around the project instead of moving the different projects itself so each layout type is chosen based on the type of their product and product volume and the need for their flexibility and standardization and next one is layout design processor so what is layout design processor means first phase is location phase here choosing the right area one minute here choosing the right area or the site for the facility is the location phase and second phase is overall layout phase planning the different general layout of the plant or facility deciding factor where key departments or sections will be placed 
and detailed layout phase here finalizing the specific arrangements of machines workstations and some other equipments last one is installation phase here implementing the designs by setting up some different equipment and making the layout functionals and coming to problem definition and data collection here we would identify the main goals and challenges for the layout design such as improving workflows or maximizing space and gathering the data about the facilities needed materials and some equipment and other processes it is very important to understanding the problem very clearly and collecting the accurate data which would help create a layout that meets specific requirements and process design and material flow planning here mapping out the production or service processes and plan how materials will move through the facility it will ensures that the flow of work is smooth or not or reducing delays and costs associated with the some ineffective materials handling sir smooth or not and space allocation and detailed layout planning allocating the space for each department machines and workstations ensuring that they are placed for optimal productivity or not and creating a detailed plan for the arrangement of equipment and some other facilities why it is more important means for proper place or space allocation which would help for overcrowding and all necessary operations which will fit into the facility without wasting the space the layout design processor will involves the more key pages like all of this for the allocating some space to create a detailed layout for more effective and well organized facility the layout okay with this today i am going to close the session we'll continue in tomorrow's class okay thank you